Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. How the heck are you? I'm so good. How are you? I am fantastic. The sun is shining today, and we have the most lovely human beings in here for our podcast today, so I am very, very good. Oh my gosh, we're so lucky to have three beautiful ladies with us yes. that will uh, come in and visit for a while. Yes, yes, and then in honor of caregiver appreciation, um, we are going to have some caregivers here with us today. So we can't wait to get to that. Oh, my we'll get goodness. through all of the stuff that we have to do so right, that we can right. get to the good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Julie. So you had, you, okay, you asked me your question. Okay. <laughs> uh, give me a story that makes you smile when you were caregiving. Okay, so I have a few. <laughs> um, when I first read your question, I Im- immediately thought of one of the very first um, ladies that I had the the pleasure of working with. And it was a situation where she really, she didn't have a tremendous need, um, but nutrition was very important. And if she did not have someone with her, she she just wouldn't eat. I mean, honestly, that's just the short and long of it. So I would get to go there several times a week. She would make a meal for me. She would serve that meal to me. She would pick up. She would do the dishes. I got in tremendous trouble if I tried to help at all in any way. But this was truly meeting the need of what they, what the family wanted. Um, And I guess I should say that I I do not have any formal caregiver training, right? So when I came to this, I came as the finance person and somebody with that big caregiver servant's heart. But you know, no formal training. So anyway, I one day had been there and we'd had this beautiful lunch and she wanted to get in the shower. So this was a first for me. So uh, we, I went ahead and got the water all situated, made sure that it was, the temperature was good, helped her get in, helped her get out, helped her dry off. And, um, and she said, can you help me with my bra? And I said, of, of course I can. And she was so cute. We put it over her arms and then she leaned over and she said, now let me get the girls in. <laughs> I just about died because I had not I had not experienced that before in my life. But I think about her all the time. Oh. Like I just have such fond memories of her, and especially being one of the first people that I got to take care of. So, what That's about you? Pretty cute. <laughs> oh my goodness, so many stories. And uh, uh, let me see. The one story that I'm not going to tell, but I'll just wrap it up real quick is because I can't help myself, is um, that uh, the one moral of the story, and you'll get the rest, you can just use your imagination, is when you're helping somebody go potty, just make sure they sit there a little bit longer than you usually would have to because you want to make sure that everything gets completely done before you take them into the other room. And um, yeah, because as we get older, it is amazing how our, our bodies, everything, our whole day can revolve around a good BM. <laughs> the moral of the story. So, <laughs> so you know, uh, you can just guess what happened to me. And I wasn't laughing at that time, but I, I can look back on it and think it's pretty funny now. Oh. But yeah, we've uh, just the best stories, the best people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just get so attached to these people and it's it's just super super fun to be a caregiver it really is it's also the hardest work you ever do oh boy yeah for sure all right well um let's see we have a verse that was submitted this week and this is actually a colossians 3 23 24 and whatever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not to men knowing that from the lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the lord christ Yes, I actually had um, Pastor Craig gave out this uh, this verse 
just Sunday at church. And I knew that we were going to be doing this podcast and how incredibly special it was to have these caregivers come and talk with us about their day to day lives and how they have a servant heart and, and help others with this agape love. And as I heard him say that, I was like, Oh my goodness. And I wrote it down real quick (laughs) because I was like, that's our verse. That's the one for this episode. Isn't it interesting how sometimes they just hit you and you're like, yep, I know that's the one. Yeah. That's fantastic. Please submit your verses to the caregiven podcast at gmail.com. And if you have happy stories or uplifting stories, we would love to see that too. Mm -hmm. You just never know where they're going to come from or where we're going to find them. But what did you bring for an uplifting story? Oh, my uplifting story. And this is just funny because it fell right into my hands. (laughs) Um, But it's called uh, Trusting God to Send the Right One. And so... It says, uh, Jessica was the first to reply to the ad I'd placed for a caregiver to help with my grandfather who had Parkinson's and was, and was sliding into dementia. Granddaddy Bill was coming to live with us, and as a mother of two small children, I knew we'd need extra support. I pr- trusted my, uh, put my trust in God to send us the right person. When I searched for Jessica's name on Facebook, I saw that a prof- profile said, trust God and good things to come, and I knew she was right for the job. Every Wednesday, she helped shower my granddad, did laundry, and fed him the chocolate he loved. She was a hard worker, but more than that, she was just a compassionate person. She became a dear friend. And it just goes on to talk about how they watch TV together and and um, how she actually, after he passed, she had sent a picture of this granddaddy Bill dressed in a red bow tie ready to watch Lawrence Welk. Jessica worked as my grandfather's caregiver for the four years he was with us. She sat at his bedside, reassuring him that it was okay to go see his wife when death drew near. I had trusted God to send me someone I could trust, and he had delivered. Oh, he does. He just always does. Yes. (laughs) Wow. Mine for the day. Um, And this one hit me because, again, as we're talking with caregivers and people that have that extra big heart and they're just always looking at ways to serve others. I had stumbled across this on, it's called Healthy Holistic Living and it's about a gentleman named Rob Kenny. Um, basically, he's a, he's a local to Chicago and he started a YouTube channel that is called Dad, How Do I? Basically, this channel is dedicated to teaching or explaining everyday things that may otherwise um, require a father figure. So Kenny grew up without a father Um, He wanted to be able to pass on some dad advice, which I thought was kind of funny, (laughs) to the kids, other kids out there who are growing up without dads. And I just thought, you know, I don't know, it, it gives me faith in humanity and it reminds me that people are good. People are good and they want to help and um, they want to give what they can, where they can. And we're just blessed to be surrounded by these type of humans like every day of our life. So Yep. Good job. Good job, Rob Kenny. Yeah, no, I've seen his stuff and it's it's pretty cool that um he 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 has at least placed himself out there where kids can get mm-hmm. that that yeah, exposure. And it, and it looks like, you know, teaching how to tie a tie or maybe, you know, <laughs> do a car battery, you know, jump a st- jump start a car, things like that that, you know, maybe you take for granted. Well, and actually we take for granted that caregiving is for us to the elderly, mm-hmm. but he's caregiving for young young yep. people. Yep, absolutely. So it's good. Good. Cool. Well, now that we got through the business side of things, should we get into the good stuff? Oh, so excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we really, really are so excited today to welcome Robin. Um, Robin is a caregiver here at Apaga Home Care, and she has been with us since 2015. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. We love you so much, and we're so happy that you uh, agreed to come on <laughs> and do this with us. Uh, we thought in, in appreciation for caregivers and, you know, who better to tell your story than you, right? <laughs> so we came up with, or I should say, Julie came up with a list of, of questions that we thought would be really important things to ask and share. And I'll let you go ahead with that, Julie. All right, Robin, first off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I've lived in the Flathead Valley for 27 years and I have three grown children who are fortunate enough to have jobs that allowed them to stay in the valley good (laughs) so it's nice to have that family near Mm -hmm. and I like gardening and kayaking and just the good old Montana outdoors (laughs) it's cold today so we're in oh my gosh (laughs) yes yes oh so tell us uh, about where how did you become a caregiver 
I've always done social services. I worked um, with family and youth interventions, and then I was case records and care provider at uh, Flathead Industries, a local developmentally delayed um, facility. And I've just always, always done this. It got to where I wanted to have a little more flexibility with my husband's illness, and so coming here was a good a good fit because a understand here people get sick and that we do have families also. So, well, I love it. <laughs> well, we we love having you, and and something as you're talking a little bit about your background, it's really interesting um, because you've always been one of the caregivers that can go anywhere. So if we have someone that is younger or youth needing help, you know, you, you are able to do that and you have a skill set that you just mesh so well. It doesn't really matter, you know, what the need is or how old the individual is. You, you're just very well-rounded. Um, and I think that a lot, well, it starts with who you are, but then when you look at your background and everything that you've done leading up to being here, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, d- wraparound services are just so important, I think. Mm-hmm. And I have watched, we had, here we had a client that was three years old, mm-hmm. and I was with her for two and a half years. Yeah. And then someone who was 100. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, there's been a lot of... <laughs> there's, there's a lot of diversity here. Yes. <laughs> and huh. at those times, you're skill set kind of becomes one in the same Mm -hmm. it's just loving and caring yeah I think you nailed it it is it's loving it's caring it's seeing what their needs are attending to those to the best of your ability and um yeah so you're also a caregiver at home even though just because not that he's he's sick always but you would just have someone that strokes he had a stroke Mm -hmm. and then surgeries Mm -hmm. and kind of a stroke expert my <laughs> daughter who is 42 has had two strokes oh, oh my goodness and she had those within a couple years so wow. by the time randy had his stroke i felt pretty knowledgeable wow and of course all i had gained through my years of service right <laughs> wow that's not really how exactly how you want to get that experience no. but um but it's good to be an expert <laughs> yeah wow Wow, no, you're you are a very one in a kind person because, like you said, you've had, you took care of our three year old mm-hmm. up to our hundred year old, <laughs> and one of the gentlemen you were with, he had um, he had disabilities, and he was an extra special challenge, but uh, you just went in there with the joy and and laughter every day because he sometimes could be tough. <laughs> yeah, well, it helps to have that mental health training, and mm-hmm. I have early mental health training, mm-hmm. and that's just. Nowadays, it just helps to have a little mental health training mm-hmm. under your belt, even if you're in line at the grocery store. True. Yeah, you I might need those skills. <laughs> I would agree. And you bring so much to the table, Robin. Um, um, well, I have one. I had gotten a lady ready for her day, mm-hmm. and she was sitting back reclining getting ready to watch prices right oh. i'm sure it was yeah. <laughs> and she always you know crossed her legs and would shake them and whatnot well she looked down at her feet one day and said you've put my shoes on the wrong feet <laughs> and so i was a little taken back so <laughs> i looked at her and i said well how about we try this and I uncrossed her feet. <laughs> and now her shoes were on the right feet. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It is all about perspective. <laughs> and that's exactly what I had, had told her, you know. Oh, my and we gosh. We just that's laughed. So funny. You know, we laughed. And oh, yeah. You just never know. But yeah. yep, you just had the answer. That's awesome. <laughs> but that was exactly what I did tell her. It's all about perspective. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. <laughs> oh, that's, I love that's that. an awesome one. So um, you've been with us now, like Inga said, a long time. And can you, is there anything about Apaga uh, that you're, you're glad you're still with us? Because we're thrilled you're still with <laughs> only, us. Only the good stuff, Robin. Only. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> well, I think that we, we've just grown so, you know, we've grown so much. We went through a lot of turbulence with the, with the COVID being real rampant, which kind of closed the office a bit, and you really had to 
kind of buck up and depend on yourself. Everybody wasn't always available and just to kind of pop in and, and stuff. But it became, I think, a tighter and a closer caregiving network for our our consumers. Yeah, I, I love that. And um, COVID certainly did change things a lot. And I, I appreciate the way that our caregivers have rallied and, you know, just continued to march on understanding the, the differences and the changes that have had to be made. Um, but I, you know, we, we appreciate you guys so much. And, and really, f- for the most part, what you are doing is such, I don't want to say it's individual because you're never alone, right? There, but you don't come to an office every day. You go to your, you report to your assignments every day. And there has to be such a tremendous level of trust between all of us um, in order to make that work. And we just know that the people who work with us are, I mean, they, there's nobody better. And so that, that gives comfort to us, especially in the trying times and the turbulence and the, the changing. And, you know, there's, um, for me, it's really, there's been a lot of like loss and grieving that's come with COVID because, and I'll probably get emotional about it, just thinking about the differences of what it used to be like and what it's like now. And so I'm really looking forward to um, upcoming Thanksgiving. So we've, you've been with us many, many years. So you know that we have always had our Thanksgiving meal here in the office and, um, and we weren't able to do that last year. So we are, we are able to do that. We have some, some precautionary things in place and we're, we've set things up in a way that, um, we feel we can invite people back for that gathering and, and keep everybody safe. And so I am looking forward to it. It is, it is my favorite, absolute favorite day of the year. I love I, it. I def I have someone who's like, don't forget to put me on that list when you're there tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I was like, okay, you'll yes. have to meet me out front because yep. we're you know stuck for time, I so know. we got to be sure to get your task in. And oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that um, you know there's there's a gentleman who has since passed away that you cared for a lot, and that Thanksgiving, you know, he didn't go out much, if at all. But coming to our Thanksgiving celebration was always something super important to him. Yeah. So couldn't get him to the doctor, but you could get him here to, to join in the love here. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Sure. Well, and we so um I, I don't want to say we so seldom serve people because that's not true. Every you know, Julie and I and the office staff, we we serve in a different way. But that gathering where our caregivers and our clients can come in and, you know, we can serve you is like, it's just so meaningful to me. It's nice to be able to see other caregivers at those sort of things because very often we we don't see each other. We may hear a name, but you don't have a face unless you run into one another at the grocery store with our our consumers, our clients. But, yeah, so it is nice to kind of put a, a... face to name. Yes, and absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you nail it when you say y- you are out there, you know, your, your office is the consumer or the client's home. And so you don't always get a lot of that. So, uh, you know, slowly, but surely as things start to get better, um, with COVID and, and we can put other precautions in place, we, we definitely want to get back to a situation where it's just an open and light and, um, just welcoming and, you know, you can come in anytime. And that has been heavy on our hearts for sure, the changes. So I, I just want our caregivers and our clients to know that, that it's, we feel it too. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> I believe it. It's coming. I can stop in and get a cookie. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. So do you have any favorite sayings? We usually call them our grandma sayings, but. Well, it's, wasn't my grandmother saying, but it's just kind of one of my own is bounce off the walls and keep ducking <laughs> because you just love never it. know what's coming at you. And if you're just always ready. Oh, I love that. That's, that's great. Awesome. That's solid advice. Yes. Oh, goodness. Yes. Oh, that's great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share while you're with us? No, I just, I really love agape and um, or Epaga. Yes. I'm stuck. We're, we're both. I, I we do both. that still. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's a refreshing place to work. And they work hard here. 
the office, Julie and Inga and Kevin upstairs, and <laughs> to um, to match us appropriately with with our people. Julie had a family that um, just knew that I would be the the appropriate fit there. Yes. And I got back from vacation. Then I got pneumonia. So, but she put them off telling them you're going to like her you're going to like her and that is where I will go next is to Gloria Vanderbilt <laughs> she calls herself that she loves it when she gets her hair brushed oh, oh. and we laugh and it is a great family I've just it's been a good fit and there's been just one or two in my years here that just we just haven't clicked right right and that's understandable and generally it is you know when they'll say oh maybe don't send her anymore they're like well she probably didn't want to come anymore (laughs) either so there is you just fit with people and you and you don't and that's okay that's okay for people to speak up and say I because you can't do your best work when you're really not feeling it. Yeah. I, it's so personal. What we do is just, and it it can be, I mean, if you look at it that way, it it can be almost a little invasive, right? We're, we're a stranger in the beginning coming into someone's space and often their personal space. But, um, yeah, so we, we have always enjoyed. And what's interesting about, uh, the family that you're serving now, or one of the families you're serving now is I think there was some, um, you know, we just always want to check in and make sure, you know, if we think it's going to be hard or even if we don't, but we always want to check in and how are you doing? And I remember talking to you after you had gone to a new client and, you know, we thought maybe, maybe it was going to be tough. And you're like, this is a piece of cake. Like, this is great. I love this. Like, yep, yeah. Yep. She's the right one for the oh job. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you, when we do a home visit, we immediately think of people or out of our caregiver pool that would be appropriate for the family. And the three uh, caregivers that we have that we're interviewing today, the only problem is, is we can't make like Five of each of them. Oh, I know. Because <laughs> these I are know. our girls that yeah. can go out to yeah. any scenario, like you said, yeah. and we can put Robin wherever, and we know she's going to be yep. successful. And um, but when we're doing that home visit, we're looking at personality and skill set. Yep. And the and the family that we're talking about right now with Robin, is, <laughs> the family was very concerned that mother was going to be really quite ornery, <laughs> on purpose maybe, uh, to, not, to, purpose. to have it not be a successful situation and I was like oh gosh you guys I've got a gal that can be just crusty enough if she needs to be (laughs) but she's also got a wonderful sense of humor and she just can go with the flow and it's been great it has yep yeah we have a great time I'm fortunate enough to have um family that has lived here and were pioneers of this area so I have a um another set of clients who were born here and it's so nice to be able to talk to them even though I'm not 90 like they, <laughs> they are I know about these little things and when they can tell me they were born in a house next door to me oh wow. the years ago it's mm. it's what it's wonderful yeah. because it takes them back to yeah. you know and you can kind of put yourself where they're at and and just build the community right with them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely. wonderful. Everybody has a story, and it's just fantastic when they intersect on some level. Yeah. So yeah. we love that, Robin. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Have it's a wonderful a afternoon. Thank you. I'm going to Gloria now. <laughs> All right. Or have Glow, fun. as we call her Glow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, my dear. Oh, thank Bye-bye. you. And we are back with our very own Nikki Smash. <laughs> Oh, Nikki. <laughs> oh my gosh. We told you that we were going to bring you some of the best caregivers on the planet. Um, and Nikki happens to be one of them. I don't know when or why or how I started calling you Nikki Smash, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that's okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So Nikki, thank you so much for being here with us. You're you, welcome. Yeah. You've actually been, you've been a part of this Agape Ipaga home care team. A long time. A long time. Yeah, what Over did we 10 say? Years. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So we we're we are so blessed and grateful to have you, no doubt about it. Um, Nikki, you know, 
we had interviewed and spoken with Robin before, and now we ha- we've got you in here, and you are a lot like Robin in that you have this just tremendous um, servant's heart, and you actually, you know what? I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> Tell us about you, Nikki. Um, oh, where to start? I have been a caregiver for over 20 years. Um, lots of different capacities working from, well, gosh, from children all the way up to adults. And I've, I've covered all the, all the ranges from Alzheimer's and dementia, mental health issues, um, as well as working hospice. Mm -hmm. So it's, I've, I've done just about everything. And you, there's something very special that you bring to the table. And I think it, I, I think about it in a hospice capacity a lot, um, and that is music. I love music. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, well, I, I've been singing my entire life. I play guitar as well as ukulele um, and a couple other instruments. Um, and I love to be able to take that into my clients' homes. And very, very few people that I've ever come across um, that don't have some type of appreciation for the music. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I get to take that in and take a part of what's some, something that's really special to me mm-hmm. into their homes, um, it, it helps us to create a bond. Yes. Um, and I don't know, I don't quite know how to explain it. It just, it, it helps. Oh yeah. I think um, part of our philosophy is that idea of always bringing joy yeah. and music there's just something about it that just just so joyful yeah. and can take people places that um you know to take them to good places yeah definitely wow yes as a caregiver you don't do it just professionally tell us about what you've got going on at home cuz we are so i'm i'm amazed by you every day i'm i'm a total nikki fan <laughs> Yeah, we're in awe of you, Nikki. Yeah, you you. you are such an amazing, (laughs) special person. But tell us what you got going on. I have had the privilege of being a foster parent. And a few years back, uh, about three years ago, almost to the date. Oh, my goodness. um, I got my foster son, um, my youngest boy, Malachi. And a few months later, uh, his older brother, Timothy, came to live with us. And on March 4th of 2020, just before um, all of the COVID stuff really hit, Mm. I had the privilege of adopting both of my teenage boys. Oh my gosh. I feel so blessed that we've been able to be a part of that with you from the beginning because the whole foster, um, you know, getting involved with that and, you know, everything that you've gone through with that and to see it come around and and become a family for you is just it's just incredible and we really are we we are in awe of you you are a special human being (laughs) oh my goodness and then just the other day or maybe it's been a couple weeks but in Facebook you had a picture of you and your boys and I just smiled and I think I actually might have cried (laughs) um you put boy mom and I'm telling you that just (laughs) ah I just was warmed by that I love being their mom (laughs) <laughs> I know I, I can see you know the circumstances <laughs> that that bring a child to that mm-hmm. um, are heartbreaking yes. yeah so to be able to give them a stable place yep. and to know that they're in a, a good safe home mm-hmm. um, it just does something yeah. to a person yeah to be able to to share that you glow you absolutely glow when you talk about your kids. I, I love my boys. Yes. <laughs> I love and my boys. And that's not always easy. I mean, it, parenting is not easy. And, you know, your situation, it's it's hard. But you, like, you just, you do. You glow when you talk about them. And even when it's uh, tough stuff, you just, it. how much you love them is so evident. Yeah. I'd do anything for them. They're yeah. the luckiest kids yeah. on Protect the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it <laughs> takes me back to Julie's uplifting story about sending the right person. And... Yeah. You know, not only did God give them to you, but he also gave you to them. Yeah. And he knows. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's been amazing because the situation for my boys is a little different than a lot of other kids out there in that we're in touch with their biological family. Mm-hmm. 
we go and spend time with their grandparents. Uh, I talk on the phone with their their biological mom. Mm-hmm. And just recently, well, this last summer, um, their biological dad, who they haven't seen in, oh gosh, what did we figure, 10 or 12 years, wow. um, has come back into their lives. And I really, um, it, it took a lot, but we took a trip and, and I took the boys down to meet him. Mm-hmm. And we now have this huge extended family. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> oh. wouldn't have happened otherwise had we not stepped out in faith yes. and taken that step. Oh my gosh. And you just nailed that. Stepped out in faith and, you know, believed and trusted and just knew that these things are happening for a reason. And it's really a testament to you. Um, to be able to handle all of those things with such grace. Oh, yeah. I couldn't do it without God. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, that is so sweet. I um, I know that one of your current clients right now, I think one time what happened is we had a, an emergency in another, another situation. So we called you and said, could we flex you a day? Could we bring in the other person for that family so we can pull you into this place that's basically, um, you know, it's a crisis situation. And I remember you going, oh, but we were going to paint her fingernails today. <laughs> <laughs> because one of the things you do for her, and she's not the client, her husband is, but really, truly, we she is our client yeah. because um, what we do for him helps her, and, and you're just such a, a vital part of that family now. But one of the things that you guys do together as women is you – do spa day. <laughs> yeah. Her her husband is, you know, he is my client on paper, but <laughs> you when you go in, you're really not just taking care of one person. Yes. yes. Um, if they're married, you're taking care of, of, of them as a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and even sometimes their family. Uh, I've, you know, I've been with this family for four years now. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you get to know people pretty I know. well. <laughs> I know. I, it, and yeah. and you just, you learn what, what they like and what makes them happy. And sometimes it's the simple things like painting nails mm-hmm. um, or helping them sew Christmas projects, which we're doing right now. Oh, um, my word. Or. So adorable. Um, last week, I think it was last week, um, her oven went out a few, uh, about six or seven weeks ago. And so she hasn't had an oven to use. We've had the stovetop, which is, you know, it works. Um, but her family is busy. That You know, everybody's got their own lives. They've got their own children and grandchildren. So um, one thing that was really cool is I was able to help her. Uh, I found her an oven oh. on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> and we went and picked it up and brought it home oh. and hooked it up. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, you know, it's just sometimes it's the little things that that you help somebody out. They make all the, of the difference, it and does. all of those little things combined are one really great big but, thing. But but think about that. So we have <laughs> Dad on paper, who's our client, but yet you're doing so much for Mother just to get her through the day. But think about the kids. Think about the impact mm-hmm. that you. You're not just with one person. You're with this whole family because now the kids can be at work and know that Nikki's there. So everything is absolutely under control. Um, Mom's happy. Dad's safe. You know, wow. What a, what a gift. Well, and I'm laughing because it's, um, you know, one day we're painting nails and doing the spa day. The next day we're picking up an oven and hooking it up. So like (laughs) caregivers are superhuman. I am telling you (laughs) just, Yeah. yeah, just incredible. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, just love that so much. Do you have any uh, stories that you wanted to share? Um, well, of course, the oven would have been one. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, I, I do have another one. And it was from early on when I started working with, with Agape. Um, she was one of my first clients. And I only ever went to her a couple times mm-hmm. uh, because she was already living in an assisted living. Mm-hmm. So she didn't need somebody all the time. But what she did need was somebody to take her out to things occasionally. And one of those things happened to be a wedding that yes. was literally like two hours away from here. I remember. <laughs> oh, yes. And I loved this little gal. I just loved her. <laughs> and I, so I took her to the wedding, and uh, she was in a wheelchair. So there was, you know, assistance in and out of the car and in and out of other places. 
And I remember dancing with her on the <laughs> dance floor, and she was just so happy to get to be there because had she not had somebody to take her, she wouldn't have been able to go. And when we went to drop her off, she's getting out of the car, and she stopped, and she looked up at me, and she said, you know, today you were my Jesus. Oh. Oh. And as a Christian, you, you're you always wanting to put your best self forward and, and represent yourself in that light and, and be Jesus to somebody. Yes. But to actually have somebody say that to you, oh. it it changes your entire perspective on how you look at what you're doing for people mm. and and the service that you provide them and the joy that them being able to get it get out and go to a wedding. Yeah. Um, Things we take for granted. Yeah. Most of us. Oh, Nikki. That's so, a great story. Do you story. see why we need 20 of this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Even more than that, yeah. honestly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if we could clone you. It just, what a, what. What a joyful person you are, and 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 you just uh, everything that you do is so important for these people. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can never thank you enough for oh. everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I love what I do, and I love being able to get to do it. Yeah. It, well, it, we love having you here. That is just it's just so great, so great for sure. Um, let's see. Um, and then, do you have any favorite sayings? I don't, I don't know that I really do. Uh-huh. There, there's things that come up, you know, throughout the years that sure. you, you kind of latch on to one thing. <laughs> I, I guess my one thing that's been pretty constant is no worries. Oh, mm-hmm. You know, life happens. You have to kind of just roll with it. And, yep. you know, no matter what, life's going to march on. So <laughs> why worry about it? Oh, yeah. I love that so much. And over time, I've said that to my girls, like, Well, if you worry about it, does that change anything? Is it going to make it better? Is it going to make it worse? Try not to worry. Yeah. 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 So you've been with us uh, probably over 10 years now. Yep. And so um, being part of the Apaga family, we we appreciate you and and just thank you for that. Well, I appreciate you guys as well. It's um, lots of things have happened over the years (laughs) and... Um, some good things and and some not so good things and you guys have been there and really been flexible with with what I've needed to do Mm -hmm. um, as far as scheduling with with my family or being able to take time off because of of some other stuff that's been happening and it's appreciated yeah. We love to hear that, and we thank you for that. And it, it's it's just one big giant family here, and yes. we understand life happens, and you know. Um, Flexibility is one of the things that we can try to give to our caregivers, and we we are here with you always, whatever you need. Thank you. I yes. have one last story on Nick. Yes, and um, <laughs> she was with she was with a, a family, and it was a hospice situation. And basically, after after our client actually passed, the family just was so appreciative of everything you had done. You were the glue that kept the family together during that incredibly hard time. It was and, hard. And then it was so sweet because they gave they asked for permission to give you a gift. Yeah. And it was a very nice gift. It was a very nice gift. It was a, a Kindle paperweight. Yeah. Um, they knew I, I had been reading on my phone. And uh, so I was, I was very, very surprised. Uh, I remember and, your reaction to that gift. And very grateful oh. um, to get that. Yes. And I still use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still use I, it. I think about that family being so incredibly thankful to you. But then when they gave you a gift that was so um, unexpected, how thankful you were to them. They were amazing. And I still think about that family. I do too. Quite a bit, especially this time of year. Yeah. Um, because this is when I worked with them. Yeah. And, uh, and when people reach out like that and, and want to give something, it, it's just a testimony to what an incredible person we have at the family mm-hmm. at that time when they need someone. Yep. Yeah. And that was a tough situation. Yeah. Yep. You, you're so amazing. <laughs> no, I don't know about all that. But. Oh. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you for the thank invitation. Thank you so much. And, uh, <laughs>
Yeah, and we got to get her to work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my dear. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. All right, and we are back with our last but certainly not least guest of the day. Uh, this is Becky. How are you, Beck? I'm doing well. Good. Do you want me to just ramble on, or would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I reigned from Michigan, moved out here in 1997, and I've been doing this, oh gosh, 35 plus years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and you've been not only a professional caregiver, but you family caregiver, you're, you're just a caregiver. I am. Yes. Yes. And you've been with us since, what did we determine, about 2010? I think so. Yeah, you lucky girl. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not as lucky as us. That's for darn sure. Oh. So a Michigan girl turned Montana. That's right. Yeah, and you love it here, don't you? I do. Yeah, outdoor stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, Becky, thank you for being with us today. And um, tell us a little bit about um, what you love about being a caregiver. The geriatrics is what I love the most and their knowledge and their wisdom and all of their stories. Yes. And you have been with some tremendous people. Yes. Yes. You have been placed with some people that have done just un unbelievable things. And um, some we can't share. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You, you're correct on that. Yes. Um, I did actually see, and we can't say the name, but one of the individuals that you cared for is actually coming out with an autobiography. Yes. Yeah. Pretty neat. You've yes. been with a gentleman that I think we can talk about who is just a very well-known um, person in this community um, in, involved with 4-H and shooting sports. Right. Yep. That gentleman made a big difference. And I can't imagine what, um, how much information you learned from him. Oh, he would remember every phone number just a memory and the poems and his jokes and he was my favorite yeah yeah and his tiddly at 4 p.m <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and farkle farkle yeah yes. i learned tiddly and farkle from him yes. <laughs> how does one farkle very carefully <laughs> Is it a dice game or a card game? It's a dice game. A dice game, okay. But, but you got to have the tiddly with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, with him also, uh, Becky is one of those caregivers that really thinks outside of the box on what she can do to bring joy. Mm -hmm. And um, you took him fishing through a program. Fishing Without Barriers, yes. yes that was right. going to be one of my favorite stories. Oh, tell us. Good. Well, tell us. <laughs> oh, boy. It was cold. <laughs> And the waves, I would say three feet at tops. Oh, and oh, yucky. Oh, boy. We went out once and came back in, tried it again, and Pat was the only one that did not get seasick <laughs> oh. as his wheelchair was sliding on the boat. Oh, my gosh. And he's the only one that caught a fish. Oh. I think he was 98. Oh, oh my god! Was this on Flathead Lake? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. would you ever have thought that that you would have that invent that adventure? I was the lucky one. Yeah. Uh, Isn't yeah. that true? Yeah. 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 So we actually, um, way, way, way back when, um, you were actually working for us, at, not right in Kalispell, but kind of in an outlying town, and we had quite a quite a client situation with some just crazy stuff that was going on. I think exploitation, perhaps yep. a little bit. Yep. Theft. Yep. Uh, that was a challenge. Oh, it was. Yeah. You know, we had gotten involved with the family um, because I think they knew that there were issues with the private person that was there. Right. They had no idea to the extent. No. Yeah, none. And really, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, that person did actually end up being convicted and, yes. and put in prison. Yes. So, man, that was kind of scary, though, because there was a lot of players and um, outside things. There was a Halloween night. Yes, detective work on our part. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That That's one of them that sticks with me as being very, very a hard situation, but the team of caregivers that we were able to put in place really made a life-changing impact for this gentleman. 
Well, he was tough all around because not just the social situation that he had gotten himself into with a very unreputable private caregiver right. uh, that was trying to take off with all the goods, but then he also was getting dementia. Right. And I mean, his night shifts, he had a military history mm -hmm. and he would have night terrors. Oh, yes. And he would actually, we had to make sure all the guns were locked up, taken care of. Um, one night, one of the caregivers said that um, he had a knife. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things that really happen in people's homes. Right. And so there are times you definitely can't be a scaredy cat. <laughs> no, you have to be tough and strong and watch your P's and Q's. Yep. Yeah, and understand, you know, to the best of our ability, the, the disease that we're working with um, so that you can respond to that. But, wow, that was a tough one. And I don't know, um, I'm just happy you didn't go running and screaming the other direction. Cause oh, my gosh. happened a long time ago, and you, you're still we here. We needed our toughest of the tough. Oh, we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Becky is that. You are the toughest of the tough. You are another caregiver that, you know, you come to mind in every situation. We, yeah. we get a new client or there's a, you know, something that's, not just, not just like the ones that I excel at, you know, having lunch served to me, <laughs> maybe helping put the bra on. <laughs> well, I'll tell you also though, a, a situation that we get ourselves into trouble with Becky is because Becky will, um, or people that have heard of Becky <laughs> will call us asking for services, but they only want Becky. Yes. That's nice to know. <laughs> it is. And it's then true. the hard part for us is trying to figure out when in the world we're going to set them into your schedule. <laughs> oh my gosh. You are so giving of your time and, and you just, you were, you're one of, if not the hardest workers I know. Yeah. I mean, you, you rarely ever say no. You're always available. And, but I do hope that you understand that we're there for you too. And when you need to step away, you have the ability to do that and the support. Oh, yes. Dr. Julie and Dr. Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> Open doors. Uh, yeah. Yes. We are doctors um, of School of Hard Knocks. Yes. That's Got right. our PhD in School of Hard Knocks, <laughs> that's right? That's right. And yeah. sometimes you just have to be able to just rant and rave and yell and scream and <sighs> get it out there and know that you can do that and someone's going to let you do that you know, and I've done it board. <laughs> and we've done you. it back <laughs> yes. but that's one of those things where I I guess I don't know that I ever take really stop and appreciate the um the mutual admiration of society that we got going on here because we depend on each other yes it's you know you, there you work with some hard patients and and um you can't ever be angry with them, but you can call us and, and tell us about us and, and let us walk, walk it through together and how are we going to brainstorm this? And we're, we're pretty tight. I think so. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't, I think we're, we are a very unique uh, business in that sense. Well, I think I've told you before, you're my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. Yes. We actually, you know, we have a, a lady that works with us and, and works with another agency as well. And she was talking um, just, you know, just kind of some general frustrations over things that are going on. And, you know, and, and our advice is always, well, can you talk to, you know, you're talking to us. Can you also talk with, with your other employer? And, and I got the sense that, that the feeling was, no, I really can't. And so we don't ever want to be that. We always want to be open. And, um, and, you know, it's not always pretty, the things that we have to talk about with each other, right? Some of that it is, is tough true. and hard and you know, you want to scream and cry and laugh and hug and whatever, but we definitely want people to know that we are here and we, we are willing because, you know, you never know. Someday I might just fall on your doorstep, Becky. Well, yeah. I need you to pick me right up. <laughs> You're little. I can pick you up. <laughs> I actually am laughing through all this and it's, 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 I'm not laughing at the the uh, realities of what we deal with every day, but, um, you know, we, uh, when you're dealing with people, you never know what the day's going to bring. That's right. And so many different personalities, like has been mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The nicest humans, the most unpleasant humans <laughs> that, you know, it, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot that we deal with out there and, and your ability to just 
do it all and do it all really well is appreciated. Well, you guys are appreciated <laughs> too. You, you actually work with a, a, a very nice, very nice lady right now that um, actually sometimes that's not easy because I think she's coming to grasp with what's her body's doing to her, what her mental is. Right. And I think she gets frustrated and angry. And, right. and sometimes out of that sweet little mouth comes stuff you would be shocked. <laughs> True. And so you have to deal with that. It's all part of the job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Caregivers are amazing to me. Um, I'm a, a very sensitive individual. And so I don't know that I could do what you do every day. Um, it's just, I internalize things differently. So the ability to be able to understand that it's not personal, it's just somebody in the process of their disease and let it roll and just, you know, Try to put yourself in their shoes. That's the thing. Yeah. I think if you can always just try to put put yourself in somebody else's shoes, you become a little bit more compassionate to what's right. happening. Right. One thing also about Becky is um, not only is she taking care of the client, but she's also become incredibly good friends with family members. Yes. Long lasting. Yeah. I'm going to have Thanksgiving with some of them. Oh, <laughs> speaking of. Yeah. 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 So it just, uh, even though he's gone. Yes. You're still blessed to have these people that needed you so desperately during a, a hard time in their lives. And yeah. that connection is still there. Yeah, it's great. A lot to be thankful for. Becky, thank you so much. Did you have any type of a grandma saying or maybe something you've heard from your clients that you'd want to share? Well, I just, my grandma would say, dot your I's, cross your T's. I like her. I guess meaning do a thorough job. I don't know. Um, Well, you listened well. (laughs) Well, I had to. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I, and I love that. I love that about your grandma. I am very much the dot your I's and cross your T's yes. individual. I like accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a good one, too. That's, That's a really good. good one to end on. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you yeah. so much, Becky. Thanks for being here with us and sharing your caregiver stories and just your time with us. Well, Thank I'll, you. I'll tell you, the three caregivers that we've just had on this show, mm-hmm. just a testimony to the awesomeness. Oh, yeah of who we have in our Epaga family. Absolutely. We're so blessed. Yes, we are. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. (laughs) Thank you, Becky. Oh, man, what a great, great session it's been today. I I love this. I love that we had caregivers that were happy to come in here and share their stories with us. And good idea, Julie, on putting this together. We are the lucky ones. We are indeed. Yeah, we get to just circle ourselves with amazing people, (laughs) and they become part of our family. They do. I guess that's going to be it. Um, Before we leave, we would encourage you to please subscribe to us. You can do that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or go watch us on YouTube. That's always a little entertaining. Um, (laughs) Feel free to leave us a review, share us with your friends, join our Apaga Care and Share Facebook group, and join in our discussion. You know, we're really looking for feedback from our listeners, and if there are topics that you'd like to hear, if you have a verse that you would like to submit to us or an uplifting story, please send those to the caregiven podcast at gmail.com yes thank you again for joining us yep peace out girl scouts have a good day